Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode. This is episode number 13 and hopefully today's episode will be a lucky number 13 as we have two big games with our Terriers plus some more transfer window business to do as well and also we're sending our youth scout out today as well. So um, yeah, let's just get straight to it. I've got confused by my own intro there for some strange reason. Uh, yeah, today we've got two big games in the Premier League but to recap the last one, I don't really want to, but we will. Um, we lost on New Year's Day a 3-2 defeat to Leicester at the King Power Stadium where Jamie Vardy won it for the Foxes late on. As if that wasn't heartbreaking enough though, we followed that up with an even more heartbreaking defeat where we lost 3-2 to Spurs, battling back from two goals down in the FA Cup third round. We thought we were set for a replay at Wembley and then... Yeah, Harry Kane uh, won it late on for Spurs and we unfortunately lost the game by three goals to two and were dumped out of the cup in the third round. So I was gutted by the last episode and hopefully we'll respond today. So two big games, we've got West Ham at home, I've got Stoke away as well. Let's just get straight to the first one. All right, so first game back in the Premier League and hopefully back to winning ways today as we play host to West Ham. I uh, want to say just real briefly though, if you didn't see my video last night, please do go check it out after this one. Uh, I did my first ever full career mode story in one video start started with Manchester United. It was like a two hour long video. It was really, really long, but super fun. Got some great comments on it. And uh, yeah, please check it out if you haven't seen it already. But uh, back to today's episode, we've got West Ham here at home. A really important game. 4-2-3 on the course, but a couple of changes uh, from our normal first 11. See Sessignon stepping to left back role and also Zanka in the centre back role ahead of Schindler. And as for West Ham's team, it's quite a strong one. We've got Joe Hart in goal, back four of Creswell, Bonner Reed and Pablo Zabaleta with Obiang and Coyate in a DM there. Area. Arnautovic on the left, Antonio on the right, and Lanzini attacking mid, supporting Javier Hernandez up top as well. So this will be a tough game, and after back-to-back heartbreaking losses, this is going to be a test of our character and how we can respond. So West Ham at home really wants to get the win. Hopefully we can, but I think I'll set at a point and just make sure we don't have three losses in a row. Let's find out. Come on, lads, come on, lads. We do not want three defeats on the chart in all competitions. That is not good, especially with two of them coming at home as well. Because our home form had been quite good in 2017. But here's Arnautovic looking for space. Tries to roll in inside. Oh! I mean, it was fine in the end. Like We got away with it. But dear, oh dear, had that gone in... I would never have lived that one down. That would be a summation of our form at the moment. Antonio on the ball, gets round Sessignon, crosses, in it goes. Zanka just about deals with it. Pick the ball up, Lussel. Oh, Jesus, what's going on? What's that form that's been poor lately? It's our general play as well. And I don't like to make excuses, but since the patch has come out, I've really, really found FIFA very, 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 very uncomfortable to play as Tom Smith, Tommy Smith, I should say, heads one off the post and then gets behind for a corner. Since the patch has been released, man, like, my general gameplay has been absolutely terrible. I've got to sort it out. Half time, no, no. And I said I'd take a draw, but we could have sparked into life, man. We were scoring goals for fun at the start of the season. Can't do anything now. A lot of you guys have been giving me advice since the start of the series, mainly on transfers, uh, but also on what system we play with Huddersfield. Now, I do really like the 4 2 3 1. And lest we forget, we're still in a very, very good position based on how weak this team is compared to the other sides in the Premier League. But I'm not against changing things and going to a different setup. Maybe playing with two up top and, and trying to get Mounier some support as sometimes he can be a little bit isolated but yeah definitely something needs to change man because at the moment we're doing stuff like this I just can't seem to find enough bodies enough blue and white shirts around me when I'm on the ball to, to work our way forward I'm forcing things inevitably giving it away and giving chances to our opposition Antonio through towards Chicharito and Hernandez hits the post twice West Ham at the post now still nil nil this is not looking good Say twice a bit of post. One was Tommy Smith heading the ball against the woodwork. Balanzini now on the ball, trying to take it around Zanka. Rolls it across, and there is the first goal. It was coming. It was coming on. Now Twitch with a finish. 1 0 Hammers. We're all over the place. Cuts past Zanka, gives it to his man, and it's a really nice finish by the ex Stoke man. 1 0 to West Ham, his fourth of the year. Something needs to change. I'm doing it now. Something needs to change. I know, I said I wanted some more support for Mounier up top. So what I'm going to do is bring on De Poita, who has scored a couple of goals this season for the Great Dane. I'm going to take off Tom Ince as well, who Ince is a real hot and cold player in his team. Some games he's really good, some games he's anonymous. Take him off for Kachunga, who has scored five goals this season. And hopefully that double change and also a change of formation as well will spark us into life. But as things stand right now, we're set for three straight defeats. 
in all competitions. And again, we're still in a comfortable position in the Premier League. We're way away from the relegation zone. And of course, just staying in the division is important for us this year in our first year in the top flight. But I'm not happy with our recent run of form. And in general, I think, I think this will be, what, three wins in like 12 games or something? That's nowhere near good enough. Can't run the ball. First chance could fall here. De Puerta could be through. Oh! That would have been perfect. De Puerta, first time strike just over the bar. That's what we want to see, though. Chance straight from kickoff after the changes. Let's get back on level terms. Come on, Huddersfield, we're better than this. We, we beat United and Liverpool back to back, for goodness sake. Come on, Casey Palmer on the ball. Space to shoot, and Joe Hart makes the save. This is more like it. Come on, do not want to lose the first game. Good tackle by Sisto. Wins it back and finds Casey Palmer. And Palmer into Mounier. Mounier, can he find space to shoot? Can he find space to shoot? Mounier! Oh, Joe Hart! What a save! Come on, come on, come on. We need a goal. Sessegnon to Zanka. And Zanka to Smith. No one, no one's giving me an option. The, the, the movement is just too static here. Smith to Moy. 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 Aaron Moy. Oh, what a goal. Aaron Moy with an absolute thunderbolt has rescued a point for Huddersfield with seven minutes to go. It's a bit of Moy magic from the Australian. Back on level terms. And we deserve it. Great spell of pressure in the second half. Finally, it pays off. Moy takes it round one and just smacks one from range. And Joe Hart, who made a great save a moment ago, has no chance with that one. 1-1, one, one, back on level terms. And my word, did we need this. Aaron Moy, the saviour. No, 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 no. Oh, final kick of the game. Hernandez fires it over. And that will do it. So, final score at the Kirtley Stadium, 1-1. One, one. I said I were taking a point. For a while, I was thinking it's not going to come. It'll be three defeats in a row, but I'll take it. We end the lost streak after two. Aaron Moy rescuing us with a wonderful goal. When you take a look at these stats, it wasn't really the best of games, but we got the point that we so sorely needed to end that lost streak, and I'm delighted with that. Very tough game for man to match, though, because it wasn't really a classic here at the Kirkley Stadium. Not too many chances at all, although it felt like there was more. Like, the stats didn't seem to reflect the general game. It felt like there was more chances, but I guess the poor defending is, is why it felt like more of an action-packed game. But anyway, more man to match for that absolute thunderbolt to rescue us late on. 1-1, one, one, a very, very important point that one. And thank God for that. We needed it. All right, so right after the game, we have a bid here for Joe Lolly that came just before the game against West Ham uh, from Regensburg. So, Joe Lolly, if he goes there, we'll be playing alongside a lot of fake players based on real players, right? Because, no... Just stop. Um, but anyway, uh, Regensburg, I'm pretty sure it is, want to take him for 540 grand. Uh, the bids are getting lower for Joe Lolly because the clubs are now realising that they may as well not even waste their time because he just declines every single contract offer he's given. But uh, 540 grand, 160 grand on his valuation. Third time lucky. Come on, Joe Lolly. We don't want you, mate. We'd rather have the money. Get gone. And also, we are going to send out our U Scout as well. Now, in the last episode, we picked up Ian Kavanagh. Not Kavanagh, as I called him, thanks to the comments. Uh, Ian Kavanagh, I should know that. Come on, mate. Um, the Republic of Ireland scout who picked up in the last episode. Another five-star, five-star one alongside Keith Barr. I asked you guys in the last episode for uh, suggestions on where we should send him. Lots and lots of great comments and lots and lots of great suggestions. Uh, one I saw was to Australia. So in today's episode, guys, there'll be a poll in the top right for where we send him. Australia will be your first team in the poll. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of comments for Denmark as well. So they are the second team you guys can vote for in the poll. Serbia, I thought would be quite an interesting choice. Obviously, we're struggling to defend. Maybe we could unearth the next Nemanja Vidic. Canada is the fourth nation you guys can vote for. Obviously, back in my FIFA 16, Karimo, what for the Milan. Uh, we had quite a lot of Canadian talents due to my brief stint with that nation. So Canada, the fourth team in the poll. And the fifth nation you guys can vote for in the poll is Nigeria. So yeah, five great nations for you guys to vote for in the poll today. Please do vote. As I always say, I need to get you guys involved as much as possible in this series. I, I love the real community feel we have. You guys contributing to the series, as well as me making the episodes too. So yeah, five nations for you guys to vote on. Uh, in the top right of the video, you'll see the little eye. Uh, if you're on a mobile or tablet, tap the screen. It'll be there for you. If you're on your desktop, hover above the video and you'll see the eye. Click on that. And yeah, five nations in the poll. Vote for which one you want us to scout next will be in Kavanaugh. And hopefully, we'll continue to improve our already very good academy. Now, we also have an email here from the Welsh FA who have said, since we have not heard back from you concerning in the vacant head coach position for the national team. Please give that to us right away with your answer or you must be forced to assume your silence in this matter means you do not want to coach Wales. And the truth is, Welsh FA, I do want to coach Wales. I think that would be an amazing project, but... 
you can't scout for, for Welsh youth talents in this game. I don't know why EA have not added that country in yet, because the Welsh as a footballing nation are getting better and better and stronger and stronger year after year. They're at, I think, their highest position in the FIFA rankings ever in the country's history. They've got some awesome players. But I, I don't want to take a nation that I can't get youth players for either. So I'm going to reject the offer. I know quite a lot of you guys say when I first got the offer, please take the Welsh uh, job. Some of you guys saying take the Indian job as well for Jackie Chan Singh. I can't do that challenge, I'm sorry. And I'm going to reject Peru as well. I was going to reject all three of those nations there that have offered me, uh, that have offered me the job. But yeah, I just I, I don't understand why you can't scout for Welsh youth talents. If, if anyone at EA is watching, highly unlikely. But please recommend that you can do that now. You know, scout for Welsh talents in the next game because it, it needs to happen. But also a bit here for Colin Quayner. Uh, Nottingham Forest want to take him. And I am probably just going to accept that deal, even though it's 15 grand low in his valuation, because we've barely used this guy. I'm not much of a fan of him either. So yeah, Quayner could go, and I'm fine accepting that bid. I just... I know this is a common problem this year, but it doesn't make it any less frustrating. It is not going to be long before I terminate your contract, Joe Lolly. Leave the club and go somewhere else. We do not want you. Oh, that is really irritating me. Well, hopefully we are going to cheer ourselves up here and make our first signing of the January window. Uh, Moses Odubajo, who my scout has picked up uh, in the Global Transfer Network, has his contract up coming at the end of the year. Now, this is a 24-year-old right back uh, playing for Hull City. I, I believe this guy can represent, is it Nigeria as well as England? I'm not sure. But anyway, 24-year-old uh, right back. This guy's got some very, very, very nice physical stats. Of course, we want good physical players here at Huddersfield Town due to our play style. So I'm going to offer this guy a pre-contract and hopefully we'll get him in for next season. I think he would be a really, really good addition to replace Tommy Smith long term. So we've agreed on three components in Odubajo's contract, important squad role, a uh, four-year deal with no release clause. Now he's on, uh, what is he, eight grand a week right now. He's probably going to ask for a pay, uh, pay increase, but we are going to offer straight away... Oh, that was going to be eight million pounds. Definitely not. We are going to give him... Imagine that, accidentally offering that. Eight million pound a week? Ah, oh, go on then. Uh, we're going to offer him eight grand a week to begin with, which is his current uh, contract. But I think he'll ask for more money plus a sign on bonus as well uh, but I won't offer one straight away I'll wait for the agent to, uh, to, to ask for what he wants there and he's going to want an extra 400 quid a week in his contract which is nothing really plus 125 grand sign on bonus with 190 grand after hitting 20 appearances we're going to counter that though and what we are going to do is edit the bonus give him after 10 games 100 grand and also change the sign on all oh, change the sign I did it again change the sign on bonus to 100 grand as well and hopefully they will say yes well he's okay with the 100 grand after 10 games but does now want nine grand on his contract plus 125 grand sign on bonus do you know what moses you can come in i'm totally fine paying that as a free transfer i think this guy a pretty decent pickup 73 rated with some decent physical stats so moses on dubajo will be our first signing of the january transfer window he won't come in until next season as this is a pre-contract signing but a pretty decent pickup there and on a free transfer i'll certainly take it and also, if Quainer is going to go to Nottingham Forest, which hopefully he does, uh, I wouldn't mind signing a new, young, talented English striker. Connor Chaplin from Pompey is only one rating lower than Quainer, and I don't think we'll have to spend much more than what we're getting for Quainer anyway. He's valued at £1.5 million, 6.1 grand on the wages, and only 20 years old as well. We're going to put a bid in for Connor Chaplin here and uh, see if we can get him to Huddersfield Town. So we are going to start with the offer straight away. He's valued at £1.5 million. Based on what the chief exec said, I think we might be able to get him a little bit cheaper than that, you know. So we're going to put in a £1.15 million pound bid to begin with and see what they say. No, they want £1.35 million, but do you know what? I'm totally fine paying that. That's under his current market valuation. So to me, that's totally fine. 1.35 mil, I'll, 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 I'll pay that. I'll pay that. That's not a bad deal for us whatsoever, that one. Much lower than I thought we'd have to pay initially. All right, so I was going to wait until after the Stoke games complete this deal, but uh, Connor is pretty eager to kick things off straight away. So let's go ahead and offer him the contract now. I, I wanted to wait until Quainer had decided where he's going to leave or not um, before putting in the contract offer, but he, uh, he wants to come in now. So uh, yeah, I've got no choice but to offer him the contract straight away just in case he decides to put out 
And for 1.35 mil, this will be quite a good little cheap pickup for us. So hopefully, he won't ask for much more on the wages than he's on right now. And this will be a smart little signing. So uh, we've agreed on three components in the contract. Now it's on to money. And as you can see, he wants 12.5k a week plus 155 grand sign-on bonus, which is quite a lot of money for a 67 rated player. We are going to try and duck that wage down to 10 grand a week if we can. And also get that sign-on bonus down to, to 100 grand as well. Although his agent might pull out. So I'll, I'll, I'll take it down to 120 grand. So 120 grand sign-on bonus, 10 grand a weekly wage and fingers crossed he will say yes no he actually wants more money than they originally wanted a moment ago so i've totally balls that one up but you know what i'm fine paying that money for me he's getting in a decent young prospect so uh, yeah chaplin in for a lot more money than i was prepared to pay initially I should have just accepted that contract offer there because that would have been fine for me. But okay, 11 and a half grand on the weekly wages. I'm fine paying that and a bit of a big bonus too. But it's fine with me. Chaplin, welcome to the club. And so these are Connor Chaplin's full stats. As you can see, we want physically good players in this team and we continue to sign players that are just that. He's very quick, very agile, some decent stamina and jumping and balance as well. His strength rating not too low either. And technically, as a 67 rated player, there are some decent stats there as well. He's only 20. 20 years old, so plenty of room to grow. A left footed player of high, medium work, uh, work, uh, work rates, three star, three star. Five foot six, a little bit concerning, so won't be much good in the air, but still a pretty decent player and uh, a cheap signing as well. So, Chaplin, one for the future and a smart little pickup. All right, so second and final game today, and it is rock bottom Stoke away from home. So surely this is the game we get back to winning ways and finally get our first three points of the new year. Uh, it's an okay team, so why they're struggling so much, I'm not entirely sure, but certainly a beatable one, no doubt about that. And thank God they're not using Peter Crouch after what happened in our fixture at the Kirkley Stadium. But for us, we are switching things up again and going to the 4 one 2 one 2 wide to so a change of formation to start a game for the first time this season with Cessna at left back, Tuanzevi and Shin at the CVs and Tommy Smith at right back, Moyes our DM, Sist on the left, Kachunga on the right, Palmer the attacking mid and up top together, Mounier and the Poata. So expect a lot of crosses in this game and hopefully some goals as well. So Stoke away, we need to get back, uh, back to winning ways. Come on Huddersfield, this has got to be the game. we pick up our first three points of 2018. Let's get it done. This has got to be the game where we get back to winning ways. Our first victory of 2018. Let's get it done. Kachunga on the ball. Holds it up and finds Smith. Into Casey. Back towards Moy. And Moy will give it back to Palmer. Palmer has Mounier trying to get in behind his man. But Palmer will take it around Zuma. Look for space to shoot. Zuma backing off. Back towards Moy. Scored one screen in the last game. Back to Palmer. Back to Moy. We're keeping hold of the ball nicely. But we can't seem to break down a very compact Stoke team at the moment. Schindler... To Sessignon and Sisto in space. I said I'd be crossing. Let's try the first one here. Not a bad delivery. Up goes Mounier. Oh, what a save by Butland. Huddersfield, this is the game. This is the game. I'm feeling it. Schindler to Palmer. De Poita could be through there. Oh, what a chance. De Poita. De Poita get a move on. So I get a move on. Oh, first touch is poor. First touch is poor. But he turns and finds Casey Palmer. Oh, God. Come on. Huddersfield, we are better than this corner, which Moy will take. Whips it in. And it is Mounier. Oh, a save by Butland again. Jack Butland on fire. So bringing on Connor Chaplin for his debut as De Poita comes off. He's not done too well to number 20 in his first start in the Premier League in a while. So the new man from Portsmouth could hopefully become a Huddersfield hero straight away if he wins us this game. Still tied at 0-0. 33 minutes to go. I don't think he's going to finish goalless. Surely someone's going to find a back of the net at some point. Chaplin to Smith. Through to Kachunga. Can we win the game late on? Kachunga on the ball. Cutting inside. What a run from Kachunga. What a run from Kachunga. And it flows towards Connor Chaplin. Surely. Yes. Connor Chaplin on his debut. Wins the game for Huddersfield Town. And with 11 minutes to go. We are going to claim our first win of 2018. Get in. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious me, do we need that? Kachunga so well to hold it up, gives it to Chaplin and Butland, who's been great today, beaten by the young man on his debut, 1-0 to the Terriers. Thank God for that. 
Come on, come on, let's not throw this game away. One and a half minutes of normal time. Berahino's free kick into the middle. Sessignon loses out to Hesse Rodriguez. Lussel saves it, but Flotch, you know, Peters turns it in. And Stoke have done it again. They've come from behind to level it late on against us and claim a point. Good delivery by Berahino. Lussel made the save, but I think he's got to palm it out further than that. I was always taught this as a junior footballer. If you're going to make a save, but you can't hold on to it. You've got to push it as far away as possible or behind. And instead, it goes straight to Eric Peters. 1-1. And Stoke have leveled it to death. We've thrown it away again. Can't believe this. I can't believe we are, we are never going to win again, are we? The Stoke fans are still not happy. They're still at the bottom. But I'm sure the Huddersfield fans are devastated two times in a row now. we face Mark Hughes' team. And, and we've thrown away a win right at the end. Sickening. We just cannot win anymore, man. We just cannot win anymore. 1-1 one, one the final score. We deserve to win this as well. So many great chances. Jack Butler made some amazing saves in the first half. And a draw against Rock Bottom of Stoke is just not good enough, man. Twice in a row we faced these boys and let two points slip through our fingers later on. That's four points drop it. They're dropped against this side. I'm absolutely livid. But man of the match, Peter's got the highest rating when 8.2. Scored that late goal to rescue it for Stoke. So we'll give him the man of the match. But actually, I think, do you know what? No, we'll give it to Butler because Butler in the first half was just on fire. So Butler and Peters can share the man of the match after a very disappointing draw. Once again, means that we slip up in the Premier League and fail to close out the game. We've done that far too many times this season. Far too many times. And that's why we're not higher up in the table. So that will end today's episode of the Huddersfield Town Career Mode, guys. So a big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please do leave a like, as likes are a cause for... Oh, come on. Sorry, I'm getting frustrated now. Um, thank you for watching anyway. Uh, please do like and enjoy the video. Hope you guys have had a fantastic weekend. Much love to you all. Enjoy your Sunday night. And I'll see you for the next episode of the Huddersfield Town Crew Mode very soon, which will feature transfer deadline day as well. We'll also send our you scout as well based on your votes in the poll. So thanks for watching. Have a great night. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon. Bye.